presenter. That's uh, Dr. Anant Bosali, and uh, he will present a video on lens, using the lens capsule in patients with refractory macular holes. Lens capsular flap transplantation Volume. in the management of refractory macular holes. Diminution of vision secondary to macular hole is a common cause of referral to the retina clinic. The standard macular hole surgery consists of pass planar vitrectomy, which has removal of vitreous gel, which in turn relieves the anteroposterior traction over macula. The second step involves the internal limiting membrane peeling, which in turn helps to relieve the tangential traction over macula. Then we inject the expansile gas into the vitreous cavity, which provides the tamponade. In post-op period, the prone positioning of the patient helps in tamponading the edges of macular hole with the expansile gas in the vitreous cavity. In spite of recent advances in macular hole surgery, failure rates have been reported from 4 to 13 percent. These pre-op and surgical factors influence the successful closure of macular hole. In case of failed primary surgery by conventional method, we describe the novel technique of using crystalline anterior or posterior lens capsule transplantation which is inserted into the hole which bridges the whole edge and facilitates hole closure. Here we present our first case of a 65 year old female who presented with the best corrected visual acuity of 4 by 60 in right eye which had an immature senile cataract, nucleus sclerosis grade 2 and a full thickness macular hole. Her left eye had immature senile cataract with 6 by 6 vision. The OCT picture shows the full thickness macular hole with vitreomacular traction and the base diameter being 837 microns and the smallest diameter being 661 microns. Standard surgery of pass planar vitrectomy, ILM peeling and inverted flap technique with SF6 gas was done. The macular hole remained open at one month follow-up and the visual acuity was 5 by 60. Then we planned for SICS, IOL and anterior capsular flap transplantation into the macular hole. After constructing the 7mm sclerocorneal tunnel, the anterior capsule was stained with trypan blue and continuous curvilinear capsulorexis was done. The anterior capsule was taken out and preserved in balanced salt solution. A piece of anterior capsule is trimmed to size bigger than the macular hole. After fluid air exchange, the flap is introduced in vitreous cavity by using micro forceps. It is positioned in place by using a diathermy probe as the tip helps in maneuverability of the flap. Intraocular pressure was kept at 30 mm mercury during the surgery. Both sutured and 14% C3F8 was injected into the eye. Patient was given the prone position. At one month follow-up, OCT showed anterior capsule over surface of retina which aided the bridging of edges of macular hole with visual acuity of 6 by 12. The surgery was successful as the patient maintained 6 by 12 vision at one year follow-up. Now we present our second case of posterior capsule transplantation. Here, our patient was a 68-year-old male who had a best corrected visual acuity of 6 by 24 in both the eyes. 
His right eye showed pseudophagia with full thickness macular hole. He underwent pars planar vitrectomy with internal limiting membrane peeling C3F8 gas. At one month follow up, his visual acuity was 6 by 18 and the hole was found to be open. Then we planned for the posterior lens capsular transplantation into the macular hole with C3F8. After making ports, 1 is to 20 entocyanin green dye is used to stain the posterior capsule. Microforceps is used to do the posterior capsular excess. The capsule is trimmed to size bigger than the macular hole. The infusion is turned off temporarily so that the jet stream doesn't displace the flap. The flap is introduced into the vitreous cavity and gently released. It was positioned in place by using the diathermy probe. We see the proper positioning of flap in macular hole area. Fluid air exchange was done. Ports were sutured by using Ato Vicryl and 14% C3F8 was injected. At two weeks and one month follow-up, we see well opposed edges of macular hole with post-operative 6 by 9 vision and the posterior capsule aiding the macular hole closure. This was maintained at one year follow-up. Although ILM flap also can be used in field macular hole surgery, the anterior and posterior lens capsule carries the advantage of being thicker but still pliable, has higher specific gravity, is easily available and has good maneuverability. It also carries a minor disadvantage of being transparent, warranting staining before mobilization. <coughs> to conclude, the anterior or posterior lens capsule transplant is a promising technique in management of refractory macular holes.